Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth, and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him, and his house, and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he has. He will surely curse you to your face. Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not put forth your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. The story of Job provides a behind the scenes look at spiritual warfare. Satan's whole purpose was to accuse Job, a man that God said was blameless. Satan attacked the very relationship he had with God. That is the devil's plan for us. He wants to separate us from God. He wants to discourage us from praying and reading the Bible. He wants us to worry about our lives so much that we forget to thank God for his many blessings. If you don't have a reason to thank God right now, I will give you one because I have been there. The Lord's acts of mercy indeed do not end, for his compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I wait for him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the person who seeks him. It is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. King David wrote in the book of Psalms, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are a blessing. The devil seeks to discourage us daily and make us afraid. We will not be persuaded because we serve a God that has unseen eternal powers that have overcome this world through Jesus Christ. God is the conqueror of all things. Satan's methods involve deceit, schemes, lies, and trickery. Just like he tricked Adam and Eve in the garden. We are no better than them. Has God really said, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? You certainly will not die, for God knows on that day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will become like a God, knowing good and evil. We serve the true and living God that is always available through prayer. If we are in pain, we can cry out to God. God already knows what we need. He is waiting for us to ask him through faith. You ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend what you request on your pleasures. You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. When 
dealing with spiritual warfare, everything begins with God. We cannot win this war by ourselves. It's literally impossible. God has to fight on our behalf. He wants to protect us and fight all of our battles. Also, all of our secret battles that we hide in our heart. He wants to remove the shame that we hide. The tears that even our family and friends cannot detect. God has a surprise for us. He will accomplish more than we could ever ask of him. He is the Savior. Eternal Father, strong to save. He just wants us to watch and glorify and to thank Him. There is no person that has not experienced this war. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how smart or good looking you think you are. No one is exempt from fighting because the word of God will be fulfilled. Jesus is the ultimate general in this war. He set the example for us. He fought and prayed and followed the scriptures and the whole time was led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus chose to die for us. He took our punishment because he loved us. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. God the Father did not spare his Son, so he will not overlook us either. For it pleased the Lord to bruise Jesus for us. If he renders himself as a guilt offering, he will see his seed, he will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant will justify the many, for he will bear their wrongdoings. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the plunder with the strong, because he poured out his life onto death, and was counted with wrongdoers. Yet he himself bore the sin of many, and interceded for the wrongdoers. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell, so you don't miss part two of the series. How to Become a Spiritual Warrior for God. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. I'll see you next time, friends, and stay blessed.